Welcome to 7 Days of Starting off this week, we're looking again at the stars, as the Chime Observatory in Okanagan Valley, British Columbia, has detected radio signals from halfway across the universe. Don't get too excited though, I'm afraid it probably isn't an ancient alien race, and is more likely a high speed rotating neutron star giving off a strong magnetic field, or it could be two neutron stars merging. Well, I mean, it could be an alien species, but probably not. The fast radio bursts, or FRBs, of which there are 13, come from around 1.5 billion light years away, and this is just the second time they have been detected. 2019 has now seen the naming of its first new species of shark, however it's a bit of an unfortunate story. Cacarhinus obsolaris is named based on only three specimens, which were all collected and preserved more than 80,000 years ago, and had previously been referred to a different species. However, subtle differences in the head indicate that this is a new species, though sadly the shark has not been seen since the specimens were originally collected. This explains the new species name, which comes from the Latin for extinct, and the researchers say in the paper how the creature's historic range is very heavily fished, and the shark needs to be assessed by the IUCN. They also say that with so few known records, there is a possibility that this shark has been lost from the marine environment before any understanding could be gained of its full historic distribution, biology, ecosystem role and importance in local fisheries. In paleontology news this week, there's been a great ichthyosaur paper published. Researchers have recently CT scanned a remarkable historic ichthyosaur specimen that was originally uncovered over 60 years ago. Although first classified as an ichthyosaurus communis, it's now been realised to be a much rarer species of proto-ichthyosaurus, and the way in which the fossil was preserved, in three-dimensional pieces, has allowed the paleontologists to view it in great detail. The scan revealed the internal structure of the bones, as well as making it possible for a digital 3D reconstruction of the skull to be created, marking the first time that a digital reconstruction of a big-bodied marine reptile's skull is available. And lastly, a very interesting study has just been published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society B, which looked at the rate of bite force adaptations in various parts of the amniote family tree. Using a newly developed phylogenetic statistical method, researchers found that bite force went through several periods of increased rate of change, compared to the background rate in several groups such as Maniraptorans, Finches and Hominins, but that in most other amniote groups there was no significant rate change. This study is therefore important as a template for future investigations into rates of adapted changes and the ecological factors responsible. Thank you for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. Bit of a short one I'm afraid, but we're all very busy at the moment and we hoped you enjoyed it anyway. If you would like to and haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you. And if you do, we'll see you on Sunday.